Okay, let's say we want to find the integral of curl f dot n for the surface consisting of the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 16, uh, the part of that sphere that lies above z equals 3. And our function f, y, z, uh, just typical function z squared i plus x, z, j plus x, y, k. The boundary of this surface is just the intersection of the z equals 3 plane with this sphere. It's easy to do that intersection. Uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 16 with z equals 3 gives us x squared plus y squared uh, plus 3 squared equals 16. x squared plus y squared equals 7. So our boundary curve is uh, x of t equals, well, x and y form a circle of radius 7, so we can parameterize that by x of t equals square root of 7 cosine t, y of t equals square root of 7 sine t, with z going from 0 to 2, with t going from 0 to 2 pi, and z equals 3. Right here is our parameterization. I'll just digress to say that orientation is important. Uh, this curve is oriented in the positive direction. Sometimes we have to uh, integrate around a negative direction, and the orientation of the curve determines the orientation of the surface in a way I haven't yet been able to completely discuss. Uh, so pay attention to what your textbook tells you about that. Now, having parameterized the boundary of this surface, we can select any surface that's enclosed by that boundary. Any surface that has the same boundary is going to give us the same result. It would be not impossible, but a little bit complicated to figure out the normal vector uh, for this sphere and the limits on the uh, surface and the f, the curl f dot n, and all of that stuff. We'd have to do some parameterizing. We'd have to do a little bit of work to get this. It's going to be much easier to evaluate the integral uh, around the boundary curve. So the integral over the surface of the curl f dot n ds is the integral over any boundary curve. Uh, 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 Again, let's back up. The integral of curl of f dot n ds for any surface bounded by our curve C this is going to equal this. So that since our desired surface is bounded by C. All we have to do is integrate f dot t ds over C. We've got a parameterization for the curve, so we can just plug the x, y, and z of our parameterization into this expression. And we get our result without all the hassle of doing a surface integral. So that's very straightforward. z is 3, so z squared is 9 dx is the derivative, the differential of seven squ square root of 7 cosine t. That's going to give us negative sine t and uh, square root of 7 and the dt. Very similarly, uh, xz is 3 times the square root of 7 cosine t. The differential of y of t is square root of 7 cosine t dt. And our x, y, dz z is a constant 3. Its differential is 0. So we have, yeah, sure, we have uh, the square root of 7 cosine t times the square root of 7 sine t, which I didn't really need to write down, but for completeness went ahead and did. But then that's multiplied by just uh, 0 dt, because our dz, again, is just 0 dt. So this part of the integral is 0. So we have very little work left to do. Uh, we can factor, uh, no, I'm not going to factor out the square root of 7 because we got one here and we don't have one here. Um, <coughs> excuse me, this is going to be 9 times negative square root of 7 sine t 
integrated with respect to t, and then we're going to have a cosine squared here. We're going to have a 3 times uh, 49. Sorry, 3 times the square root of 49, which is 3 times 7, 21. And our integral is just going to then be uh, integral from 0 to 2 pi of what I just said. Negative 9 square root of 7 sine t plus 21 cosine square root of t dt. Now, I'm not going to go through the integration technique. I've integrated powers of sines and cosines a number of times. So you can refer back to those examples or refer back to your uh, knowledge of first-year calculus. Uh, I'm just taking kind of a shortcut. I'm using the fact that I know that the average value of the cosine squared of t is 1 half, so that uh, what we get when we integrate the cosine squared of t from 0 to 2 pi is just 1 half of 2 pi, 1 half the length of the interval, average value times the length of the interval, and I draw this conclusion, which you can check by actually integrating. It's kind of late. I might be just thinking completely wrong here, but uh, I've, I've gone with the idea that the average value of the cosine squared is one-half. Uh, used it numerous times, and I'm pretty confident. And I'm also confident that you couldn't see a thing that I just did. And I'm not going to go back and redo this. Uh, but again, uh, I've simply written out the we're going to maintain our focus here. Uh, this gives us this. The integral of sine t around a closed curve is zero. We end up where we started. The antiderivative is cosine of t value between 2 pi and zero, which gives us zero. The average value of the cosine squared is 1 half, and 1 half times the length of this interval is uh, just pi. So we end up with 21 pi, which you probably ought to check yourself because you probably need a little bit of practice with integration.